Hey guys, welcome to another time of Bible teaching. We're here looking at birth pains today. And I'm going to probably be laying out some scripture for you, showing you some things that are kind of different than what you would normally think. And because of birth pains, most people believe that the birth pains lead up to tribulation and, um, well, the rapture and tribulation, but actually birth pains are in tribulation. And we're going to show you that from scripture. And it does make a difference because you're going to see some other things like um, um, peace and safety in a place you didn't think it was. And everybody's looking for peace and safety. Whenever anybody says peace and safety, oh my goodness, all the videos go out, people go nuts. We won't see it. Just to keep in mind, the Bible was written primarily by a bunch of Jewish people. And oh, it's about a bunch of Jewish people. Written in a Jewish context. And it's primarily for Jewish people and Gentiles, because it doesn't matter Jew or Gentile, the, the Gentiles are grafted in. And a lot of the Gentiles, you know, the church wants to just push the Jews out of everything, but the roots, the base, and everything that we're grafted into, you know, are must be in the wild olive tree is Jewish. Well, actually, it goes back to Abraham. But anyhow, um, so you want to look at birth pains, okay? Well, let's, and again, for me, it doesn't matter if you were Gentile. It's who do you belong to? Who do you belong to? And if you don't, if you don't belong to anybody, you're already saints. So let's look at uh, Jeremiah 30. As we're looking for birth pains, let, let me open up your Bibles. This is a Bible study. So let's open up your Bibles and look at it from Scripture. We're going to look at Jeremiah 30. And we want to start with verse 4 here. Now, these are the words the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judah. Interesting. Northern kingdom, southern kingdom, Israel, Judah. Southern, northern kingdom has been gone since 722 B.C., and it, will ne it hasn't come back. We're going to be going through birth pains uh, because the whole world will. We'll look at that, though. So thus says the Lord. Direct quote from God. We have heard a voice of trembling, not of fear, and not of peace. Were they expecting peace? Yes, they were. Keep that away. Keep it in mind. They were expecting peace. Ask now and see whether a man has ever been in labor with child. So why do I see every man with his hands on his loins like a woman in labor, and all faces turning pale? Alas, for that day is great. So none is like it. When it is the time of Jacob's trouble, he shall be saved out of it. And if we don't understand it's during tribulation at this point, um, read the next verse. For it shall come to pass in that day, in that day, last thousand years, starting with the um, rapture and tribulation. Says the Lord of hosts, there's another end times prophecy. Let you know this is definitely end times. All right, well, the time of Jacob's trouble is tribulation. Whenever I see the day is great, I start thinking about the great tribulation. I'm not going to hold fast. It has to be that. So, we're, But when do they get saved out of it? Somewhere near the midpoint. Okay, so they were expecting peace. Something happened. They were expecting peace, and war is coming. And they're freaking out because they can't handle this. Um, in short, what I believe we're looking at, and we're going to show you this in a couple places, um, Psalm 83 war happens right after tribulation, and Israel wins that on its own. So I did several videos about this. It's in a section or a playlist um, with war in Israel. They're going to win that war. Out of that settlement, that peace agreement, it doesn't have to be Daniel 9, 27. I believe it's going to allow them to rebuild the temple, and it's going to promise them peace. They're not going to get peace. They're going to get Ezekiel 38, 39. That's when they freak out. That's when they see they can't do it themselves. That's when they say the, the magic words. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Okay, tuck this away. Let's, let's go on. Um, let's go to Isaiah 13. you got a lot of verses to cover here. I actually went down and cut down the list some. I just didn't use them all. Isaiah 13, we're going to start, we went 6 through 8. Well, the man again, that's that last thousand years. 
it will come as destruction from the Almighty. Therefore, all hands will be lent. Every man's heart will melt, and they will be afraid. Pangs and sorrows will take hold. There will be pain as women in childbirth, and they will be amazed at one another. The faces will be like flames. Hmm. Again, earth pains in tribulation. Where do we want to go next? Let's go to Micah. Is that Micah? Yeah, Micah 5. What verses? Micah 5, 2 through 5. But you, Bethlehem Ephrata, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me, the one to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth are established from the old, from everlasting. That's the first coming. That's his birth. Therefore, he shall, he shall give them up until, until the time that she who is in labor has given birth. Okay, what this is saying here, Messiah came. He was rejected, corporately rejected by Israel. They were given up. They were pushed aside. They were set aside, not divorced. There's a difference. Um, until the time that she who is in labor has given birth. That given birth, yeah. That's when they accept Messiah. You get it when they finally say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Then the remnant of the brethren shall return to the children of Israel. Um, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord and in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall abide. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and this one shall be in peace. Okay, so in here we're seeing, with both pains, that she's going to give birth, and that the remnant, and it's Israel who's giving birth, um, and it's in the middle of the birth pains. Hmm. Interesting. She set aside. Where is that? Go to, this is, I didn't, don't have this in my notes. I believe it's Zechariah 12 or 10. I want to explain something here if I find this. Right here, verse 6. This is Israel after they've returned to God. I will strengthen the house of Judea, and I will save the house of Israel. I will bring them back because I have mercy on them. They shall be as though I had never cast them aside. He cast them aside. Um, they, were, they were betrothed. Uh, read the New Covenant back in Jeremiah 31, 31. It says that he was a husband to them. He didn't divorce them. He didn't give them a, a divorce, divorce certificate or a get. If he did, they could not have remarried. He's bringing them back. But they have to, and it's going to be with the birth pains that they come back. We just read about that in Micah. Now let's see where this is in the book of Revelation. It's Revelation 12. You understand the rapture in the book of Revelation? It's in verse 4, not 12. 12 is the midpoint. I know, I know. Everything with the Revelation 12 sign. I get it. I was, you know, years ago, what, seven years ago or whatever, I was expecting it too. It didn't happen because the, the tribulation uh, rapture is not in Revelation 12. What is this? This is Israel saying, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the birth pains. This is Israel being born into Messiah. Now the great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with, who's the woman? It's Israel. Clothed with the sun, with the moon in her feet, and her head, a garland of 12 stars. And I'm not saying that the, how do I put it, that the signs that we see in the heavens couldn't be a sign of this, but it's not the rapture. It's Messiah being born into Israel. Then bearing with child, she cried out in labor, and then he would get married. She bore, go down to five, she bore a male child who was to rule all the nations and a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and to the throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness 
this is all mid tribulation. Israel's heading out to Petra. We see Satan getting thrown down to the earth. That happens mid tribulation. Because he has times, times, and half times. He only has three and a half years. He doesn't have thousands of years if he'd have been thrown down in Isaiah. That was a prophetic, perfect tense of a verb saying what's going to happen. All right. Um, from here, let's go where? What is it that happens midpoint in tribulation that Israel repents? Go to Matthew 23, not 24. Matthew 23. Oh, all the way to the bottom, through the bottom. Oh, Jerusalem, um, verse 37. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who were sent to her. How often if I wanted to gather her children together, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. Oh, that word wings, so much to it. I'm not going to go there today. It's where the Zitzi, that has all the law, the twists and the turns, they hang on the wings, the victim off. Anyhow, but you are not willing. See, your house has left you desolate. See that verse right there? That is Hebrews. We're not going to go there right now. It goes back to Jeremiah 22, verses 1 through 22. It's talking about the house being desolate. The house is house, synagogue, temple, all of it. It was saying everything's going to be destroyed. That's why that that's what spawns Matthew 24. And the disciples just showing them all the buildings, like Lord, what do you mean it's gonna be left desolate? Look at these buildings, and what does Messiah say? I tell you, not one stone will be on another. But the verse we came for is right here in 39. For I say to you, you shall not see me no more till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And this is why Satan has been trying to wipe out Israel ever since and trying to get Israel so they don't believe. In the Messiah, Constantine had a huge role in that, and it's not good. I know Saint Constantine. Saint took me and set aside. He set aside for something different. Ain't what I want to be set aside for. Where are we going to go next? Let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah thirteen. Still got that song in my head. You know what I'm talking about, bullfrog. Jeremiah thirteen. Verses 20 and 21. Lift up your eyes and see those who come from the north. Who comes from the north? Gog, Magog. Where is the flock that you will be given to you, your beautiful song? What will you say when he punishes you? For you have taught them to be uh, chieftains, to, to be head over you. Will not pang seize you like a woman in labor? That's the birth pains. Um, understand Israel is going to be in Petra for times, times, half the times. Um, the abomination of desolation we see in Daniel 12 happens at 1,290 days. There's an extra 30 days, so it's 30 days before the midpoint that Israel see it. She's going to have 30 days to get to Petra. So I actually believe the point where they say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord is three years in. Three years in, because the rapture is on Rosh Hashanah, probably start, the tribulation probably starts on Yom Kippur. That's going to give you an exact seven years to the end. Three years in, between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, there's a day known as the Shabbat of Return. No, it's not in Scripture. It's just a Jewish thing. Uh, there are things that aren't in Scripture that are, were known from Hebrew. For example, how did um, Noah know what animals were clean and unclean? Moses hadn't written about it yet. But anyhow, the Shabbat of return, and it's. I used to think about, oh, that was the rapture. Nope, that's not the rapture. That's Israel returning to Messiah. I want to go a couple other places real quick, and we're going to try to wrap this up fairly quickly. Um, go to Psalm. Oh, I missed that verse, didn't I? How do I want to play this? Let's go back to this other one first. Go to Revelation 3. It's real easy to listen to what I'm saying for somebody to take out of here and say tribulation is all about the Jews. Yeah, all about the Jews. Keep in mind that the Jews that are saved are going to be hidden away in Petra. Uh, Revelation 3, 2 and 3 is all letters to the churches. That's to the church age. Because you have, Revelation 3.10, because you have kept my command to persevere, 
I will keep you from the hour of trial which will come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Hmm. What is that hour? Does that hour sound familiar? Go to Matthew 24. So many people take one verse and they try to make a theology out of it. Uh-uh. Don't work that way. you got to put it all together. It takes work. I'll tell you, it does. Um, here we go. But of that day and hour, no man knows, not even the angels in heaven, but my Father only. Keep in mind, this is not necessarily the rapture. Hmm, why do I say that? First of all, this title here, that's not there. You just get rid of those. Man, put that in to make it easier for you. This comes before it. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven. So this is not necessarily talking about the rapture. It's talking about the last day, the last thousand years, which includes the time that heaven and earth will pass away. That's the day. What's the hour? We just read about it. It's a shorter period of time. It's tribulation, which starts at the same time as that day. But you'll notice it was to test. What's the purpose of testing? You want somebody to pass. If you're tempting, you want them to fail. Um, but it's to test everyone on the earth. There are multitudes and multitudes are going to come to salvation during tribulation. You and Gentile. It's not about just the Jews. All right. Um, go to um, Jeremiah 49. I told you that I did some videos about war in Israel. And in those videos, I talked about how Psalm 83, the rapture has to come first. And here's just two verses that explain that a little bit. But it's also talking about birth pains. That's why I'm including them. And I think birth pains are all of tribulation heading up to the time where Israel repents. So it's, you know, the bold judgments. Excuse me. It is the... Seal judgments, it is the uh, trumpet judgments, at least the bold judgments. Anyhow, let's let's go on. Um, yeah, I would say everything in the first half, and probably even in the second half, as we get into the final birth, the final thing is, actually the birth is Messiah, Israel, yeah, Israel being born into Messiah, or Messiah being born into Israel. Anyhow, Jeremiah 49 Verse 22. Sorry, it's a little bit of babbling. This is about Edom, right? Prophecy against Edom. Yep. What is Edom? It's southern Lebanon. Uh, excuse me, southern Jordan. But who is Edom? Well, Edom means red. That'd be Esau. These are the descendants of Esau. Um, God named him red because he traded his birthright for a bowl of red stew. His grandson, Amalek, that's, that, that is um, Gaza, the, the Amalekites. They're the ones that attacked Israel from the rear, attacking all the children and women and cripples as they came out. Yeah, it's some interesting stuff. Check it out. That's where that war goes back to. Hang on, 22, verse 49, 22. Behold, he shall come up and fly like the eagle and spread his wings over Bozrah. The heart of the mighty men of Edom in Spani shall be like the heart of the woman in birth pains. All right, in that day, last thousand years. Understand that this passage in like, I forget exactly which chapters. I know it's 49, 50, I think 47 uh, and 8. It's actually about Nebuchadnezzar, and Jeremiah was told to prophesy through the world about what, what Nebuchadnezzar, God's servant Nebuchadnezzar, was going to do, that he was going to wipe out all these places and overtake the known world. But when we see that, and we know that, and we saw it happen, when we see things like in that day, right there where it says in that day, you know that this is a dual prophecy because it's going to happen again in the last days. And go down just down to 24, Damascus. Um, is Assyria part of Psalm 83? It sure is. 
And if you look at verse 24, Damascus has grown feeble. She looks like she's pretty feeble. She turns to flee, for fear has seized her. Anguish and sorrows have taken her like a woman in labor. Same time, same time period um, when, when they attack. Again, that, ha that war happens after, um, the trip after the rapture. Um, and when you see these, these nations and it says in that day, and it's talking about Assyria, it's talking about Edom, you know that that battle is after the rapture. It's in that day, the last thousand years. So when Damascus gets destroyed, nobody's ever going to live there again. Everybody keeps saying it's going to be Israel that nukes it. How about if Israel just bombed it and they hit nukes that are there? I think that's more probable. But that will probably happen in the Psalm 83 war. After that, you have the Ezekiel 38-39 war, somewhere before the midpoint of tribulation. That's going to be the emphasis for Israel to say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And then you're going to have Armageddon at the end. I know some people think they're going to be coming down on flying horses and fighting. Yeah. That's me says, yeah, don't fight, but I'm going to fight then. No, you're not. You're a witness. Messiah speaks. It's over. That's the word, the sword, the word that comes out of his mouth. Um, remember, let's go back to Jeremiah 30 where we started, and then we're going to go one more place after this. Who knows? I might think of some other place to go. Jeremiah 30, um, 5, for thus says the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. They were expecting peace, okay? Psalm 83 happened. A peace deal was cut. They thought they were good. You follow me? Go to First Thessalonians five. But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. Why? Why does he need to write to them? He's been teaching them. The times and the seasons are the appointed times of the Lord. You understand that. If a Jewish person accepts Messiah into his heart, he doesn't become a Christian. He's still a Jewish person, but he's saved. So there was a lot of Jewish people who accepted Messiah, and they understood the feast days of the Lord. But there were a lot of Jewish people who did not. That's the synagogue of Saint. Um, think about, I know, I know, we want to say it's a Rothschild. It's, it's, it could be. It's Jews that have not become saved. Um, you, see, you see that when Messiah, actually John the Baptist called them a brood of vipers, that's sons of Satan. He was saying that to the, the ruling elite, the Pharisees and the sages. Messiah made a similar um, uh, comment. I forget where it is. He talked about how was it? You go out to get a proselyte to convert somebody, and you go to all this trouble, and you make them twice the son of hell that you are. Something like that. Anyhow, what we're going to see here is a bunch of you and they. And it's for understanding, Messiah, understand the feast days. Because if you understand the feast days, you know what day he's coming. He's coming on Rosh Hashanah for the rapture. So you yourselves know perfectly well that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. So much I can say about that. But anyhow, when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. His words of the Jews get cut off. Back here. Go to Zechariah 14 or 13. I may have to pause it and go figure out where we're going. Give me a second. Zechariah 13. Yeah, hold on one second. I'll be right back. I got to move this over so I can pause. What do you know? I was right. It is thirteen. Um, this is. I will bring one third through the fire and will refine them. I'm sorry. Let's go back up to eight. And it shall come to pass in all the land. Land is Israel. The cities are the Gentile nations. So they lived around the sea. Um, says the Lord, two thirds shall be cut off and die. 
Okay, those were the two-thirds that didn't accept Messiah. They didn't have the faith to head out to Petra, where they're going to be protected for times, times, and half a times. But one-third shall be left in it. I will bring the one-third through fire, fire's judgment, and I will refine them as silver as refined. How is silver refined? By fire, seven times. And they skim off the top. How many times have Israel been in captivity under the control of another nation? Let's, let's count. One, Egypt. Anybody got fingers? We only need seven of them. Egypt, Assyria, um, Babylon, the Medo-Persian Empire, Greece, Rome. And then it's going to be the Antichrist kingdom, seven times. It's also seven years of tribulation. They will call on my name, and I will answer them. We read about that, where he's going to restore them. And I will say, this is my people. And each one will say, the Lord is my God. Back to 1 Thessalonians 5. All right. See, it's going to be those that are like, they're going to say peace and safety and sudden destruction is going to come on them. They're not going to trust to go out to Petra. And sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains as a pregnant woman. We know this is during tribulation. We've seen that. So people run around now. Peace and safety. He said peace and safety. The rapture is going to happen soon. Pardon me. Let's keep moving on. You, brethren, are not in darkness, so this day should not overtake you as a thief. If you understand the feast days, you understand God's plan, no, it shouldn't. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the best breastplate of faith and love and the helmet of hope and salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have to go through tribulation. Who died for us? Messiah Christ Jesus. Messiah, the Mashiach, Yeshua, that whatever we wake, or whether we awake or asleep, whether we're dead or alive, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other with, and edify one another just as you are doing. Um, yeah, I can't see how a post-tribber can read this and, and think that um, it's a post-trib rapture. We're not going through the tribulation, friends. Yeah, I thank you for watching. I know that this is a little different than what you've been probably taught, what others are teaching. It's different than what I assume because everybody else is saying something different. But I think scripture is pretty clear. If you got questions, ask. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Take care.